Welcome back to the IE427 garage, everybody. Today, we are gonna be working on the steering valve for the power steering unit. This particular steering valve is gonna be made by Heights. And we're gonna be installing this on the Mark IV prototype that we have here in the shop. That is the Texas car. Now, I did install this valve right here under the hood of the car before we delivered it over to Jeff Miller to get the finished body put back on the car. I wanted to get it in place. I wanted to have a really good idea of how I was gonna route the, the hoses and everything else before we put the, the, uh, the body on the car because it was much easier to move the placement around then than now. So I, I had a perfect spot for it, I mounted it, but we didn't do anything else. Basically, we just left the power steering intact just the way it was power steering pump directly down to the rack. Now, for 90% of the people out there, that's gonna be just fine. Um, we've dialed in enough caster into the front end of this car that we shouldn't have any problems with the car tram lining on the freeway with the grooves that are cut in the road. But this particular car owner said he would like the adjustability of having the Heights valve in there so that he could dial down the pressure if he's on a long trip or if he's doing a lot of highway driving and not have the front end, the steering, over assisted. So we did that for him. Now, what this involves is actually taking the lines loose from where they were. You can see right here, I've got the lines just tied together right now. And the reason I've got them tied together is because I just didn't want them continuing to leak all over the floor of the shop. But I did drain this um, as I was finishing up the last video for you guys. And so it's been a couple of days. Um, I, I captured as much of the fluid as I possibly could because it's brand new and there's really no need to replace it. I have more Honda fluid that I could put in there, but I don't, at this point, I don't know that I'm going to actually use any of the new fluid except maybe to top the system off. But um, we've got it tied through right now and I've got the lines right there ready to accept two new hoses that we picked up from the hose shop um, from Jason. And before I took it all apart, because I just wanted to make things easy on myself, I marked the one line right there. I don't know if you can see it. I marked it with a black marker and I marked H, and that's for high pressure. I wanted to make sure that I got the lines back in the proper orientations when I put this all together. Now that's the big, big thing here, because you want to make sure that you pipe this you know, run your hoses properly so that you get the maximum efficiency out of the valve that you can. Now, when the valve is dialed all the way down, so all the way clockwise, so that the, the, the valve is pushed all the way down, it's free flowing. So you're gonna have no reduction in pressure whatsoever. It'll be just like the valve was never there. But as you open the valve up, what it does is it starts to return some of the fluid from the high pressure side back to the low pressure side right here at the valve and doesn't send all that pressure to the rack. Therefore, it limits the amount of pressure and the amount of volume of fluid that go to the rack. And that's where you get your adjustability. Now, I mentioned in the last video that when I put mine in Slytherin, and this was many years ago, I didn't take note or I didn't pay much attention to the actual way they tell you to run the lines. And there is a in and an out, depending on how you read it though. And so, me being me, I saw you know the heights on the front of it, and so I wanted to make sure that that was legible from the front. Well, the way it is in Slytherin, it's actually reversed. By piping it or running the hoses like I did, I actually had it backwards. I had the pressure in here at the bottom and I had the, the return line out at the top here. Now it worked and I actually had it that way in the car for a number of years before I painted the car. But when I put everything back together or when I was checking everything as I put everything back together for paint, I noticed this because I had already done a couple of other cars with a Heights valve and I looked at it and I went, you know, this just doesn't look right. And so I grabbed my set of instructions. Now you can download the instructions here from um, 
what is it, hot rod and muscle car parts. Um, I downloaded this right off their website. Um, but it does, but the valve does come with instructions. It comes with a sheet folded up and you, you can, you, you know, you can use, it's the same, it's the same instructions basically. However, by re running my lines or turning that valve around, it actually gave me more adjustment, meaning I could never, it felt as though I could never get full pressure to the rack after after I put the valve in. Well, for, for me, it wasn't a bad thing. It didn't bother me at all because I don't like too much assist. But it did make it a little difficult if you were like parallel parking or, you know, in close quarters and you, and you, you know, really needed to turn the wheel because I wasn't getting full pressure to the rack. That's why you need to make sure that you put this in properly and that you get the hoses in and out oriented properly. So we're gonna make sure we do that on this one. What I did is I even went to the trouble of putting labels on here, pump and rack. And the high pressure line is the smaller opening. So there is a, they're all gonna be number six or dash six lines, but the bottom line here is a quarter inch NPT for both in and out of the high pressure side and the return is a 3 8 NPT in and out on both sides and so you're going to have to get different size fittings for each of the two different sizes that are, are, are on, the, on the valve. Now I always use Teflon paste and I did that on, on these. So you'll notice there's a little bit of uh, overfill on the Teflon paste. Now, I do make sure when I put the Teflon paste on there, I don't get it in the fitting on the end or past the end of the fitting because you don't want any of that stuff to go inside the line and then clog something. In this case, all the openings on the power steering pump are pretty big. This stuff would dissolve after a while. The, uh, the uh, fluid is somewhat corrosive to a paste like that. So it, it wouldn't last long or it would get diluted really well. So not a huge issue, but you certainly don't want this in any of your fuel lines. So make sure if you use Teflon paste or any other type of paste when you're sealing your lines, especially NPT lines, that you don't get any in the end of the fitting and that you don't get any past like the last thread of the fitting as well. This way, when you're putting it in, you'll still get the lubrication of the paste to get the fitting good and tight, but you're not gonna get any of the paste inside the fitting and cause yourself problems down the line. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna mount this back up inside the car, and then I'll bring you guys back and I'll show you what it looks like in place, and then we'll get our lines run. All right, so there you go. I've got the, the valve all in place. And you can see the orientation that I've got it in. I've got it so the pump side is obviously going to be coming from the side of the car that the pump resides in, which is the passenger side. And I've got the rack marked as basically the other side. And then here are two outlets and inlets going into the, uh, the rack itself. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have a nice loop that comes out of these fittings and into the fittings up there on the side of the heights valve. And then these will kind of go right into there. Now I did look at using some 90 degree fittings, but when I looked at the benefit of using a fitting like this, a swivel fitting, to get the, the hoses a little bit shorter, I, I just couldn't see the benefit because we're adding another point of failure. Basically, every time you add a fitting into a line, uh, whether it's a uh, conduit for electrical, a connection, or uh, you're, you, you've got a fitting in plumbing, whether it's in a house or in a car, that's one more point of failure that you're adding to the overall system. And so whenever you're trying to design something like I said, even for something like electrical, you want to limit the amount of connections from point A to point B as best you can. Because a bunch of needless connections only means that down the line, 
it's another point that something's gonna fail. And so in something like this, we've already got you know a hose that's only two feet long. I didn't feel like adding another fitting just to make that 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 hose you know 12 inches rather than 24 inches. And so we've already added enough points of failure, you know, with, with the heights valve itself. We've added four fittings, but those four fittings have two ends on them each. So that's eight points of failure. So you start adding more and then, you know, in a line just for a power steering system, you know, you've got, you know, 20 points of failure just in fittings. And so I'm just not comfortable with that. Try to limit them the best you can to keep those chances for failure as low as you possibly can. So next I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to run the hoses for the, uh, the rack side of the valve. And then uh, I'll bring you back, I'll show you those. And then uh, probably the last thing I'll do is I'll, I'll tie in the hoses from the high pressure side and the return back to the pump. A little music update for you. ZZ Top Pearl Necklace. All right, so I've got the hoses for the rack side in place. Now I haven't tightened them because I just wanted to see my routing and that's kind of what I figured when I was laying all this out. I knew I was gonna have these these S bends in them. But honestly, it was the probably the, the, the least intrusive way to do them without having extra fittings. And I'm gonna have to come up with a creative way to strap the pipes right up there. But I think I can do a similar strap kind of what I did here for for these underneath the X frame so um, a combination of cushion clips and a through bolt I think will allow me to get a strap probably to the fan shroud housing right up there but we'll see um, if nothing else I've got the X frame up there I can strap to as well so we'll see how that goes. So let me let me bring you back. I'll have the pump side of the hoses into the heights valve, and then uh, we'll get everything tightened up, and we'll get it filled with fluid. All right, hoses are all in place. Now I still have to tighten the two heights valve hoses that are coming down to the rack at the heights valve. I've got them tight here at the bottom, and I've got the pump hoses tightened into the heights valve. I can get those from down here. I just can't reach to get in there to do the last two hoses. So I'm going to lower the car down, open the hood, get in there to do those from up top, and then uh, I'll probably be able to put fluid in. I think since I've got the brand new fluid, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to recycle the stuff that I've got in the two containers here, and I'm going to put new fluid in here. And then uh, I won't be able to start the car for you guys today because <laughs> I'm inside. It's cold outside. I don't feel like opening up all the doors. But uh, I think I'm going to go ahead, lower the car down, open the hood, and get those two last fittings tightened up. All right, there you go. It's all in. All my lines are tightened. The only thing left to do is fill the system with fluid, which I'm going to do from the other side of the car. That's uh, over here where the pump is. And it's a little bit of a fun job to do because there's no there's no sight glass, there's no dipstick. You can see the cap is right here. So you have to use kind of a long funnel to get in there. And so your best to just measure out what you need. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour those two cups together, see exactly how much fluid came out add that amount back in and then maybe a little bit more and then uh, leave leave it at that and then once we start the car and uh, get the, the system bled then we'll know how much more we have to add but uh, that's gonna probably wrap things up for today um, the next the next video is gonna be the dreaded wipers I think that's about all I have left to do on the car is the wipers and then, uh, then it'll just be a matter of getting the car cleaned up and getting ready to make its trip to Texas to deliver to the owner. But uh, don't know when that's going to be. Um, we're, uh, we're in winter, 
in the winter months right now, it's November, and so weather's gonna be an issue. So we're gonna have to schedule around the weather to get that car delivered to the owner and try to work around the weather. So we'll see how it goes. If you're enjoying the content here, as always, please do the like, the share, the subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.